Is there error? No, it's it's some weird computer. <laughs> There's probably some Apple security emergency push they sent out that ruined everything. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> okay, we're recording. So, hey, everybody. Uh, this is the Chaos Community Call. We're just chit-chatting a little bit. Um, this is May 16th. And um, in this call, what we do is just talk about stuff that's uh, pertinent to the whole chaos community for anybody who's new or watching this recording and not sure what this is all about. Um, it's a uh, it's a time when we can all come together and add anything to the agenda. So if you have something on your mind, feel free to add it on there. And just a quick reminder, we are under the chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact. Cameras on, off chat on the side, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. We're here to uh, just accommodate whatever. So that being said, let's jump into it because we do have quite a few things on our agenda today. You know, I meant to ask this. I never, ever asked this. It, can you all see this? Is this, I guess, big enough? Like I always just keep it at the regular font. Is it big enough? Yeah, yeah. I see it just fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. I could make it bigger. Okay. If I can maybe a, that maybe a function of different people's screens, but I, I can see it just fine. Okay, there we go. Because, you know, I mean, as I get older, I, like I turned the font on my phone up and my kids make so much fun of me now. I mean, it's not like all the way, but it's a little higher than it was. So, yeah, I, I have a grandma lamp I have to use to read <laughs> serial numbers on devices, yes. you know, because they're so small. Totally small. And yeah. I, I am of that person that will take a picture of something so I can zoom in on it if I can't read it. Like I'm, I'm that person. Or I hand yeah. it to my kids and be like, what does this say? Okay, so if you have not um, added your name to the agenda and you would like to do so, you absolutely can. And tell us what kind of shoes are your favorite if you have a favorite. Um, would love to hear it. Oh, Crocs. Yeah. I saw, uh, I think it was Amazon has a sale on Crocs right now. I'm just saying. If anybody wants to get on that bandwagon. Uh, Merrill slides. What is that? Oh, are those just like those like rubber shoes with like the? No, no, they're just Merrill shoes, the brand, and they're okay. just like they're like slippers, but they're they're like slide ons. It's like, like my jam. Yeah, mine are definitely slippers. Vinod is just like he's he doesn't even want shoes. I love it. Work boots, nice flip flops. Yeah, yeah, I love these. Yeah, uh, honestly, because I have recurring foot issues and. The, the work boots just provide the best support. Yeah, that's important. Um, okay, so first thing on the agenda, we just wanted to give a quick shout out to Vinod who successfully defended his dissertation. So yay, he's a doctor. Yeah, unfortunately without revisions. So we're sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's super bummed about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you. just really great job. That's so awesome and such a load off. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I would like to point out that Kevin also defended his dissertation. Kevin! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we celebrated Kevin in an earlier meeting, but yes, definitely. And Matt Matt Cantu defended his thesis this semester. So it was a busy semester for, for Yay! folks here. We'll pin him on YouTube. For those of, the, of you who know Matt, Yay! Oh my gosh. We, so I saw amazing. Matt at OSS NA. Oh, yay! He, he joined us for the um, post Chaos Con um, light drinking at the, at the hotel with the really bizarre um, art display of two circulating QP type Japanese things that were weird. I don't know if anybody else cares to characterize them differently. They sort of freaked me out. Sophia says Squid Game. Apparently they're from the show Squid Game, and that was confirmed by someone else, but I haven't actually seen the show. So okay. I don't yeah. <laughs> I didn't get yeah. it. It just was kind of <laughs> odd for me too. Yeah. <laughs> so Kevin, sorry, Kevin, are you also a doctor then? Uh yes, I, I defended a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but the uh I don't think we've had a meeting since because of uh Oh Chaos Con. Chaos Con. So Thank you for the uh, uh, congratulations. That is really yeah. awesome. So and congratulations to Benad as well. I just, I can't even, yeah. I was lucky to get yeah. through bachelors. <laughs> then I was like, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of work. So good job, you all. That's amazing. 
Um, okay, well, that was a good segue into ChaosCon wrap up. Who wants to give this Detergia updates? I see somebody put that in there. Yeah, I, I put that in there. Um, is, is there anybody from Detergia on the call or? No? There's one. Well, I didn't attend ChaosCon any. So. so, I mean, so what I would, what I would uh, say, I, th I thought, and others can fill in the blanks, but I thought Daniel gave a really good talk about some of the work that uh, Baturgia is doing around risk and uh, evaluating ecosystems uh, in different ways. And um, I, I thought it was a really exciting, good talk about some of the future directions and roadmaps that Baturgia, but I didn't give the talk, so I don't, that, that's what I remember. Did they release the recordings yet? Does anybody know? I don't know if the LF has. I still have to edit the ones that I did. Okay. And I yeah, and I just I am uploading the photos as we speak. It just I couldn't get the the hotel Wi-Fi to play along on on big files. I can get the updates and then add it to the doc data. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, Matt, you had unmuted. Were you going to say something? No, I'm back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here we go. Matt is here. <laughs> uh, Sean, do you want to give some updates on Augur then? Um, yeah, the Augur, the Augur talk uh, primarily focused on the use of uh, a new a new project called... Um, uh, so Augur is now using a, a front end called 8 Knot which has been developed under the OSS-Aspen project. And it's a dash plotly front end that allows you to sign up for your own account, add whatever repositories you want. If the data has already been collected by someone else, you'll see it right away. Otherwise, uh, Augur will go collect the data um, as fast as it can, sometimes a couple of hours if there's low demand, sometimes you know a couple of days if, if there's high demand. Um, and uh, it lets you, you know, maintain a list of um, a list of repos, so you can create like collections of repos that you can just come to this site and look at over time. And there are um, four right now, four different uh, sets of uh, things that will be proposed as metric models at some point, and also a number of open tickets on the project to implement the metrics models that have already been defined. In the chaos project, um, and the really the 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 goal is to make chaos metrics really readily available with the click of a button and the creation of an account to anyone who is uh, curious about it, curious about just starting to learn. And it's going slow right now because I don't know why. It will. It would it be. It could be on my end. Like no, it's pro. I, I, I think well, I've sized. I think I've sized the server on, on this on this on this too small. It was perfectly fine before I exposed it to the public. <laughs> so right now, if you click on that link, just the metrics.chaos.io. No, just as you did here. It oh, uh, looks like it up a specific repo, Sean. Arm. So there's dead. a yeah. So there's a there's a default repo in each case. Um, when a user logs in, the one of the changes we'll make is we'll make you can always see your repos. So if um, if you were logged in, you could see all the repos. Um, if if you click the X on Armbed and just in this case type type the word Sean. No matching. Oh yeah, maybe you have to be logged in for that. But type type um, type salt. Oops. No, no. What's uh, I added that last night? Uh, try Azure. <laughs> Type chaos. It will work. I have tried. Yeah, it. chaos works. Try chaos. I'm not quite sure what. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you, you see, if you click chaos, then at the top there, that'll show you the entire chaos org, and then just click search. And it'll show you that so it's across the chaos org 
and then there's a, that's the home tab, and then there's an overview tab and a chaos tab and a company tab that shows different visualizations. Um, Maybe we should look at this. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, averages of close, averages of open. Yeah, that's yeah. actually opened an issue. Well, I think those might not be right. Um, <laughs> click overview. If you click overview, you'll start to see, um, you know, contributor growth by engagement, and we have active drifting in a way which are parameterizable, and you can define. And then you can see we've had a significant growth in new contributors by month. Um, yeah pull request activity, pull requests over time. So this is just the beginning of, of um, a project. And the, the, real, the real advantage of the 8-Knot project is because it uses Dash Plotly, there's a recipe for creating new, um, new visualizations that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so adding dashboards or adding things uh, should be pretty easy. This is just our, our beta release. Of it. I, I like here too, you can say no, in our case, stale means like, you know, two weeks or whatever. You know, I like that you can change all of that. Yeah. And this is one of the things we talked about is, uh, you know, this is, these are data science tools. And, you know, as we talk about data science uh, being an important and growing part of chaos, uh, these, t these are the kinds of tools that data scientists frequently use. So it, would be from, so if you, for example, hired a data scientist, they would be able to figure out the overall architecture of this application of Dash Plotly um, relatively quickly because they'll already be familiar with a lot of the underlying tool sets. And that needs to be filled in. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I was just curious. And then company is obviously. Um, we're looking at email domains and commit activity by domain. And we have this from a public SaaS oriented site. We obviously don't have the private lists of which developers are a part of which companies. So we can only provide that sort of general information. Super are, they, interesting. are these auger metrics that are being pulled in? It's auger data. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was curious about the, the naming of the the metrics is that pulled in from Augur, or is that something that's uh, built into uh, uh, the, the dashboard here? So the names of the metrics are not directly pulled in from Augur or from Chaos, and so that's a it's another issue that I need to need to open up. We were um, this is this is MVP, <laughs> minimum viable product, and so these are all good issues that I can open up. Okay, um, gotcha. Thank you. Lines. This is great, Sean. This is a really solid start. It's taken us a long time to find a front end for Augur that isn't hideous. So we're, um, we're proud of that. And, and also just, I mean, I think the really great thing is you can create your own groups and then see those and that the, if somebody else has already gathered the data that you want, that you can see it right away. So it's a shared resource. Um, it doesn't require waiting. Uh, and also because we've accelerated Augur a lot, uh, most of the data appears, but most, most of the, like I did Azure and Microsoft groups um, during the demo and all of the data was there by the morning. So um, that's like 7,000 repos. So we're, we're starting to see some real, real good um, performance on gathering data. Yeah, that's amazing. So if someone wants to help work on this project, would they just go to Augur, the Augur Slack channel and I th hop in? Well, I think one of the things that, um, and actually I've, I've had, I had a conversation with Daniel at, um, at, at OSSNA and, and also with a few other people. And you know, one of the things we want to do is um, make, make the path to contributorship for projects like this a little bit easier and uh, start to get more developers involved from some of the different chaos companies, not just for um, this, but also for Paturgia. So, so the path to contributorship is something that I think, I think has to be defined better 
than it is. Like, I think we do a really good job of defining the path to contributorship for metrics and metric model definitions. And I, I think we need to put some effort into path to contributorship for software. Um, so yeah, that's that. I had a couple of thoughts. Um, could you go back to it? It's not like just to like have issues, but like if you're, if you're looking for like help in the design of the front end yeah um, like these hideous colors with low contrast yeah <laughs> we <laughs> talked about that last night so it's, it's fresh in my mind yeah i wasn't gonna even go there but i'm wondering <laughs> if um a, uh something to do would be to you know we have in slack the um it's the chaos africa designers channel yeah to Instead of asking folks to come to Augur, to like, we have a channel of folks who are interested in design. Yeah. That may have an interest in participating in feedback on design for this. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. So, so maybe just a quick post and saying, here is a, here's a design for a software as a service version of some Augur or some chaos tools. Um, mm -hmm. And what are your, what, what are your, what your, what's your feedback? What would you change? Yeah. And like, where is this? Where is the interface? Is it a repo in chaos? Like, it's where, not. how would they? It's not. It's okay. in a project called OSS Aspen. And um, we're working on moving, moving it over that? to chaos. There's uh, that, that's a work in progress. Okay. And but I think like, it's, um, yeah, go ahead. Well, so like if it's an OSS Aspen, if there were proposed changes there, would we see them here? Yes. Okay. So OSS Aspen isn't like an independent, like upstream project that you use and then modify it is, for the front end for or it is exactly this front end? It, it, is, it is exactly this front end um oss aspen also includes uh some some um network analysis network analysis repository that's being actively worked on um okay it's, so so if somebody was to the the repository called eight not i'm looking at what vinod just posted mm -hmm. that is like if there were suggested changes made here i'm guessing this is the front end yeah it's the eight not one that's the front end yeah, yeah. and so, so if there was a pull request made against that repo right there it would appear on that page yeah, yeah. Be, yep. okay yeah so like if you look at the issues on on this one for example like the top 14 are implement chaos metrics models okay and this would also be the repository where people could suggest design changes. So for example, the color yes. scheme that you mentioned would yes. be in this repository as well. Okay. Yes. Yep. So it might make sense like if you were to reach out to folks in the community, designers like this is also the repo where that work could be done. Yes. That's a good point. Yeah, I I I um there's, there's two things that uh, are, are on my roadmap next week and a half. Um, one, it, one, one is uh, just a video explaining all of this and some instructions for configuring it yourself if you choose. And, and the other is just characterizing the, you know, the nature of what we're doing here. Um, what we talked about in the talk at, at um, ChaosCon was that what Augur's really evolved into is a really solid data engineering tool for handling all of the data anomalies and API timeouts, all the hundreds of different issues that routinely occur when you're getting data from GitHub or GitLab. And uh, this, the second thing, and then 8 not is really a data scientific front end for accessing that data. So in a sense, um, the Augur, from an Augur perspective, uh, we have, I made the decision that trying to build our own front end 
when we have others who have been building Jupyter notebooks and tool and are starting to build tools like this over the last year, um, maintaining and building our own front end is not as useful. Although we do have one that's involved in the login process for 8Knot. Um, we're, fo we're really focusing on the, the, the data scientific nature of 8Knot and the underlying tools that compose it. Okay, so that's this... with that. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask real quick if is this a Red Hat project? Red Red Hat's the primary contributor. Okay. Yeah. So Red Hat has two data scientists uh, directly committed to it, and we have contrib. There, it has the project has contributions from two or three other companies as well at this point. So it is something that they're planning on continuing and and maintaining. If you can speak to corporate strategy for a company you don't work at, then you are a smarter man than me. But the commitment has the commitment seems to be there at every level of the organization. Um, that said, every company is also always laying people off right now. So yep. Under, understandable. <laughs> I had a comment, Sean. So based on the overview that you were just kind of describing about it, could you go back to the tab, Elizabeth, that is um, that home tab, the middle one? Yeah. So like kind of based on um, maybe how people would interact with this and kind of what the goal of this is, where would that information would be? Would it be in the info tab? Like, how would you express that's, that? To that's, a a, that's, it, that's a good question. And maybe that's a question for the designers. You know, I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. What, what, you know, I think probably, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the best practice is. There's, I think okay. the ability to create a single sentence that characterizes the purpose of it at the top without taking up too much space. Um, I think probably an about page would help uh, as well. Then possibly a link to a blog, you know, very okay. similar to how other, you know, this is my first foray into software as a service and <laughs> yeah no not a criticism these are just like no, some no. Of my initial these are really like, good you, questions yeah and how do you yeah somebody into this because like the first look is just a bunch of it's data yeah like you're just giving all the data yeah right up the, front yeah and and so yeah my my the design so if you want to get real specific the, the design that i've kind of laid out is people need to be able to see what repositories are already in the system and then select them and make them part of what they want and then the there will be once people create groups for themselves the goal is to have up to four buttons next either above the search box or somewhere that a designer tells us it belongs for um, the, the groups of repositories that people want to look at collectively and so, because most users of these kinds of systems, they've got a set of repositories that either represents their community or their ecosystem or their product line or their OSPO, and, and they just want to see the data about each of those. Um, and then also on the roadmap is a comparisons function so that people can select repositories and compare uh, statistics against each other. So, yeah, this is... So Sean, just to clarify, I don't need to be an owner of a repo to run data on it, right? It's just public, whatever is public. That, that's correct. And it, okay. it has to be public. Um, you could install it yourself. And if you have tokens that have access to the private repos that you care about, then you could use those tokens to, to use this for private repos. But um, we can't collect private repo data, obviously, that GitHub doesn't allow right. that. There's, there's also a metric that chaos or auger gathers now related to traffic but again there unless you have an owner token um, you can't get that data so like i have that data for chaos and for auger labs and for a half dozen other repositories because i have tokens that have the right access but in those cases you can't see traffic data without being an owner so when you talk about like seeing clones or downloads um, those are great metrics but 
most people can't get to them from most repositories. Any other questions for Sean before we move on? All right. Yeah, and I, I think I already covered the photo crap, so <laughs> you can move on from that. No worries. We all know wi hotel Wi-Fi is sketchy for sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I think a lot of Linux people staying at hotels didn't make it any better. <laughs> Silly developers, gosh, clog it up the pipes. Okay, anyway, um, let's go on. So we have two new context working groups starting this week. One is for University OSPOs, if that's your thing. Um, it's on Wednesday at 11 a.m. And the second one is the scientific community on Thursday at 12 p.m. the U.S. Central. Matt, did you want to say anything more about these? I don't have a ton of information really about these. Um, no, hold on a second. I was just looking. Okay, yep. Um, so basically they're, they're very similar to the work we're doing with the to-do group. So taking a look at metrics and metrics models in the with the to-do group, it's specific to kind of the corporate OSPO setting. And as universities, OSPOs are starting to develop. I think they have similar questions, but also unique questions to university and scientific software communities, same thing. Um, questions about how to, to think about metrics and, and metrics models. So these are really about helping these specific contexts uh, think about the things that we produce in chaos and how they are applicable in their setting. Awesome, thank you. Um, one quick question for you, Matt. Uh, are we are we running these th this first time, or do we have we? Ha I know we have outside folks that are going to be running them from here on. Yeah, I've um, been kind of just running them to like just get it kind you know, of going i'm yeah. there to, to run them and yeah. then slowly okay. hand on not just like here it's all yours you know <laughs> have fun see you later yeah i was planning to attend too just in case they needed to yeah. but i wasn't that's sure great. like how familiar like they are with anything so yeah, Sophia, that's go ahead sophia well, i just feel like it's, it's somewhat relevant because i was just at open source summit last week and met with the open source science folks that's been spearheaded by ibm research and I didn't know if there was any overlap in that community, but I think there's somewhat similar objectives in terms of trying to create more community within the scientific research community and overlap with open source. Um, I know that clearly if it's coming out of chaos, there's going to be a metrics skew, um, yep. but I didn't I didn't know if there was any communication between these spaces. Um, no, not yet. Do you be? have any more info? Yeah. In fact, yeah. yeah. We've we've been actively working with um, a scientific open source community that includes the whole R community, um, as well as a number of scientific open source projects that have been sponsored by CCI for the last three years. So we we do have quite a bit of traction with the scientific open source community already. So it would be great to connect with those IBM folks. Yeah, I just stuck in their website. Um, I chatted with Alexi and Tim Bonneman. I'm just putting his name in here. Um, he seems to be driving a lot of communication on that site. Um, it just might be nice for them to be aware of this because, again, I think they're they're interested in. I don't. Well, I'm still trying to figure out what they're trying to accomplish, but <laughs> I know there seems to be some alignment uh, in terms of gathering that community. Okay. No, that that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I know that like even outside of metrics sometimes at least in the scientific university scientific space is a lot of scientists are not uh, community managers and they don't know how to run an open source project and so the complexities that go along with that and the amount of time that that takes and more than just open source by license but like actually community building so I, that has that may be something they talk about as well but that's something I hear. I'll find out more. I'll definitely reach out to them. All right, thank you, Sophia. Thanks, Matt. Any other questions or comments about these two groups? Okie dokie, let's go on. Um, ChaosCon Africa registration is 
open. So if you are in Nigeria around Lagos or you want to get there, um, here's the information about it. I believe the CFP is closed now, but uh, yeah, you can register. So go do that. Any a buddy from the Chaos Africa team want to speak to this roof? Delight, my blessing, anybody? Anything else to add? Uh, nothing more to add. Um, we're still in the planning phase and yeah, nothing more. All right. Um, okay, so the next uh, thing on our agenda is this um, DEI.MD panel discussion. So if you've been around the DEI working group at all or the DEI badging working group, um, you'll know that we've been talking with the All In project about project badging for a while. Um, the first kind of phase of this is going to be um, this DEI.MD file, which we have developed in, um, at, you know, openly in those meetings and also um, with some input from All In. Um, and we, uh, so Matt, myself, and Ruth, and Sean, and Demetrius from GitHub are going to be on this panel discussion. So if you do want to just listen in, take part in that that discussion, um, here's where you can register. Right there. So can you, you talk about the EI.md file and its relationship with GitHub yet? Or, yeah. You know? uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know because we're recording. So I don't know if yeah. we can yet, but um, I mean, I guess we can and say what we want to happen. Can we say that? That's okay. Let's just wait a week. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to come to the panel discussion if you want to hear more, because there is some like really cool things happening with that and GitHub, maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed. So yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's your hook. That's the teaser to come. Oh, and this file is... Uh, I don't, I, it's in the all in open source, which I will link to this. I should have linked it here, but if anybody wants to see what it looks like now, um, we do link to four chaos metrics in that file. And this is the file we're gonna recommend that folks use in their repos to kind of indicate how they're attending to diversity, equity, and inclusion in their projects. Um, yeah, I'll find the, when I'm not sharing, cause I don't know what'll come up in that <laughs> on my screen, but when I'm uh, not sharing, I'll drop the link there so anybody can look at it. Anybody can make comments on it, um, but it is in the all in. Oh, it, it is public. It's public repo all in uh, open source. I think it is. Who's who's on that panel again? Um, me, Matt, Sean, Ruth and Demetrius from GitHub. She's the senior director of diversity and belonging, I believe, diversity, inclusion, belonging at GitHub. Okay. And it's related specifically to the DEI.MD file? Yeah, yeah. This um, the abstract here is not entirely accurate. So we're trying to get that updated. Um, it talks about uh, this. This a little bit is kind of what we'll talk about, but mostly the DEI.MD file. So, yeah. Okay. So this is not entirely accurate, but we're working on getting that changed. Sorry for the confusion there. <laughs> Thanks for asking about that, Kevin. No. That was a little confusing. Okay. Um, this was on. Oh, I'm getting a spam call. It's very important. <laughs> constant, constant. Sorry, that, that's, no. that was funny. <laughs> My phone is always blowing up with spam. I'm, I'm on the list apparently somewhere. Well, the combination of spam call and it's very important. Yes. <laughs> they always are. You know, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, documentation tagging. So this was an item that was on last week's agenda that we did not get to. So I'm not sure who put this on or what that's about, if anybody knows. This was me. So it was just a comment that somebody had given to me that like this, what you're looking at here, like these Google Docs are kind of hard to track. And like, it's, it's difficult to find things in the minutes across all of our different working groups. And so suggestions were around any ways of trying to kind of link our documents or try to express, you know, tags or comments in our documents that might be useful for people to kind of search and look and find things that are happening in the community. I don't have an answer for that. 
but that was kind of the request. Do you think we could integrate discourse more here by like putting me, I know we had talked about this a long time ago and it just, it takes like more work, but putting like the meeting summary in discourse, like, hey, here's what we talked about, here are the bullets, you know, kind of thing. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I still can't find discourse on our website. It's on uh, there. I know it's on there. I just, I must be dumb because every time I go to look for it, I can't find it. I'll show you right where it is, Sean. Okay. It's right here. Maybe. No, it isn't. Ah, I thought it was. Where is it on there? <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's why you can't find it. Oh, okay. Is it at the bottom? Yeah, like I, I swear, I swear it was there at some point. I feel like it was. Oh, and and, and when I look, oh here it is, yeah. <laughs> tiny little envelope. Yeah, like, which is I would assume that's email, honestly. Yeah, I really. Think, I think we should put it in um, under community. Yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. just as a drop down under community because that's where I first look for it every time, or even about. So because I think some of the uptake on it is limited just by the fact that even I, as a deeply involved chaos member, whenever I go and look for it, can't find it. <laughs> That's a really good idea. And we don't really have Slack up here either. You know, yeah. like join our Slack, join our discourse, like maybe here somewhere. Um, I think we Slack, have it, like if you go here, I think it's like, yeah, you know, I think we do uh, find, there's a, I could find Slack when I look for it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't, and it's right here, but like you have to find, you know, find, find it. So we could definitely make that more discoverable. So let's just yeah. put that in here. Yeah. yeah, I just think putting them under community makes, I think that's where people look for those things, at least where this people looks for those things. Do you, does anybody, back to Matt's original point about the documentation and these meeting minutes and discussions, making them more visible and discoverable? I mean, that was kind of one of the reasons we wanted to get discourses like so stuff would be a little more visible and searchable as opposed to Slack, which is like even worse. You know, it's really hard to find stuff on Slack, I think. But what do we think? I agree with the idea of making things more searchable. I'm in, you know, of course, as a technology person, I'm trying to think what's the best way to make a, a usable search. Right, because some of the more useful search engines like Google, you know, they, they, they do it by link, you know, looking at link weights and, and things like that. And I'm sure there's other technologies. And I, I, I don't have a recommended like search, search tool for the way that we store our information. Or if Google Docs is actually a difficult way to make something searchable, I, I don't know enough about search engine optimization or website search to have an intelligent answer but i agree in 100 percent in principle that that would be great and matt just to clarify this um person that got, the conversation was originally about like a specific topic that was discussed at a some meeting somewhere and it was like trying to figure out where that was is that kind of how it went i'm not sure what kind of prompted it but it was just the, the oh, hold on the, the, it was just, I think it was just kind of prompted from the Google Docs are just maybe not indexed real well. And they're, and we have a lot of them, <laughs> which kind of um, widens that problem. Yeah. And so, and we have a lot of content in these, but it's like difficult for somebody to come to these documents who is maybe not seeing them on a daily or weekly basis and kind of follow what it is that we're trying to do, what we have done, what is going on in the future, what, you know what I mean? Like what's maybe yeah. experimental, like it's just kind of hard. And I mean, I would, I totally agree. So I think it was just mostly that. Yeah. And it is, it would be nice also to be able to involve folks more asynchronously. So, because, you know, these meetings aren't conducive for everybody, obviously the timing is kind of crap for some. So having that, like that thing that we discussed, whatever it was posted somewhere where people can also chime in there, you know, that weren't able to attend the meetings or maybe watch the video like and want to chime in. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, maybe discourse is a way to start doing that, even if it's just for ourselves, like we can post it. 
Um, but it would be like a weekly document summary or something like that, which are like. I um, use the magic of. I use the magic of Google to identify search engine optimization for Google Docs. And I, so yeah, I, I agree with Matt's suggestions as well. I mean, like, so at the end of on Fridays, usually, although I'm behind by a week, I think, um, I usually post all the recordings. So at the same time, and I've always I've always wanted to also post kind of the summary of what was talked about in the YouTube uh, comments. Usually I just link to the minutes and I just say, hey, here's here's how this meeting went right here's the minutes. Right. I, I use the same, you know, thing for every every single um, upload. But what if I just took a little bit more time and then pulled out like here were the topics that we discussed or we talked about and then also just take copy paste that into a discourse thread. What do you think about that? And then like tag it with these individual things. Yeah, no, yeah I like that. that actually right anyway. I like that. And even if it it just might help us think through it a little bit, just by having like if you're doing that, you're like, oh, I'm trying to do this, but it's it's silly because you know, whatever, XYZ is just not working the way I was wanting it to work. Um and so I like that just because it might help kind of expose things that we could do or things that don't make a lot of sense. So that means the ones, the meetings that I don't attend, which I usually don't make risk, um, but I think that's the only one. So somebody, I'm looking at you, Sophia and Sean, would just need to maybe send it to me in like a little blob, or I can just grab it from the minutes, but I just won't have the context around it. So however we want to do that, we'll, we can figure it out. I think we talked about in like giving five minutes at the end of a meeting before to just yeah, say, like, the, these are the highlights or these are something along those lines. I mean, I, I generally kind of like that because it would ensure that we come to a focus at the end and say, what did we talk about? <laughs> so, and, and if that also makes it easier for you to populate that and the summary. I don't. I don't think that would be too uplift for the folks that are participating versus forcing you to figure out what we talked about. <laughs> so I, I'd rather put that burden on us to give you a summary than ask you to do it. Oops. Well, I can spell. We just have to be really consistent in our meetings to do that. Yeah, and sometimes we do kind of run right to the end because we're still having conversations. So, I mean, we can try. If we don't, it's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, and maybe what would be if if you were to end a meeting, like say we ended this meeting right now, you know, what are the, what would be the categories that we would want to tell other people? like? I'm totally just history in progress. You know, yeah, it's almost future. like what I would pull out for the newsletter, because a, a lot okay. of times what I put in the newsletter, I get from the meetings, uh, to be perfectly frank, like I'll come back to the agenda and be like, oh, yeah, what, what's what should I put in here to tell people about? And usually I come to this one just because it's more general. Um, so I would say, yeah, go check out this auger thing. Talk about this. Here's a thread. You can talk about it. Um, these things, announcements. Do, do we see what, what I'm? What if we? What if we? Maybe this was suggested and I missed it. What What if we just put the agenda item notes in the description of the video? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe like like I don't know if I would put this whole thing in because that's like a lot and maybe just like the high points. But yeah, I think that's good. Here's what we talked about. Here are the topics. And see if I was really good, I would say at this time, this time, uh, whatever, like two minutes in, we talk about this topic. And then five minutes in, we talk about, like, I'm not that good. So I'm not going to do that, but someday I can aspire. Something like this. Like, I mean, this is, I'm just trying to, you know, OSSNA is done. We talked about it. That was it was in this meeting minutes. 
we talked about it um in progress we talked about auger because that seems like it needs to move forward the SaaS mm -hmm. software as a service stuff mm -hmm. chaos con um in design um the dei md workshop and then open-ended would be things that maybe don't have an action item that we just kind of talked about that you know i'm really moving forward on them or yeah i don't know would you put like announcements in that or like like i'm just wondering like where this would fit would that fit in the in progress i guess yeah i was gonna put it in progress right okay. now actually open-ended would just be like i don't know i don't even know what that is but like <laughs> so, something that we something that's not over like something we haven't done and we don't really plan on doing but it's just kind of out there as a potential topic and maybe we don't need to have anything maybe we just say closed and in progress or maybe completed. this like something like this that we didn't actually get a chance to talk about but that would be under open-ended where it's just kind of like hey here's a thing go look at it yeah yeah it is there's nothing for us to do that map and somehow yeah. how we're in the Android ecosystem. Yeah. Which is <laughs> I, I know. didn't know that yet. We're, we're like on a peninsula of the Android ecosystem. It's just weird. All right, I'm just gonna look at this really quick. I know we're over time. Do a search, do a find project, just do a search on chaos. And this, yeah. This, how did we get there? Slash there's a, a slash. Oh, Slash chaos? Like, no, oh. chaos slash. Like it's a GitHub repo. Like, yeah. No, uh, just pick our. Just pick our. Okay. 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 There we go. Oh, uh, whoa. whoa. Where's the, the methodology oh, for this? I was just trying to find it to better understand how they're populating this. Yeah, there is oh, a yeah. repo that underlies it. It's it was just released on Twitter like three days ago, and so I have yeah. I've only explored it explored it briefly, and I've already got. You know the whole discussion that we had at chaos kind of about ecosystems i i really think you can define certain things automatically but i think for most companies and community managers the ecosystem doesn't map neatly to these uh, i think language or purpose kinds of things but we're on a nice little archipelago i guess yeah, we have a lot yeah. of posting, which is nice so Look at all this property coastline. Could be yeah, well, why yeah. connection we we yeah, I know that like that little <laughs> fin, that fin. If you go up, Elizabeth, like scroll yeah. like to the northeast. Yeah. Like that. That's, that's, right that's the bridge that, that sticks one. us on it. That's the bridge. I really need to read <laughs> What is it called? Wee -wee? Wee -wee? People based. Okay, that's we got it. I'm so yeah. sorry. If, if right. so you can that. double click on it. You can just can you? zoom okay. in on it. Yeah. There you go. Open group um, questions to the world. Sean, can you link the GitHub repository that this is based on? Yeah, let me find it. So I if this be... project goes away, do we get cut off from the mainland? Is that how that's going to work? <laughs> then we become a oh. little like floating island somewhere. <laughs> that could be good. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right with that. Cool. Good. That's super neat. Oh, whoa. What? OK, yeah, I could go down this rabbit hole for a while. Sorry. All, all right, those people I've... in the all right. I found I did I did I did find the repo link. Um not to find the notes to our meeting. Um this I'm gonna just oops. Is Don still on this call? By the way, no Don had to go. Okay, well we um, didn't get to this. So that's the that's the repo link. It's I think clear I assume Ivanka uh on Baca is probably an it may be a project within GitHub, but it sounds more like an individual name. Yeah, but it's still um, not telling me what they're actually mapping. Yeah. Like, I don't know yeah. what anything means. Like, what is an edge? What is a node? Like, clearly these are GitHub repositories are the node, but what are the connections? Yeah, it's it's not clearly articulated. But GitHub tweeted it, and I thought it might be interesting for us to see it. Um, and I I'm have intrigued. No I just don't know how to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, same, same, same. Yeah, that's cool. more of something to be aware of than uh, there's any clarity to it. 
Thanks for bringing that up. Did you, who dropped that in there, Sean? Did you? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing that, that's cool. Okay, I'll stop sharing. All right, sorry we went over everybody. That was really interesting. Um, yeah, everybody have a great rest of your day and we'll talk about governance, I guess, next week because I we need to like finalize that. So we'll do that next week. All right, oh. see you everybody. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye.